So hi and welcome back from Oridef uh, for night hacking. And now we have a new ge uh, guest, uh, Huen Dui Dao. Hi. So hi, and please introduce yourself and what are you doing? Uh, hi, I'm Huen. I'm actually an Android developer and I work for Atlassian uh, on the Trello Android app. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm speaking here at Ordef. I'm actually giving two talks uh, this week, um, pretty Android specific, unsurprisingly. Uh, so generally, my my kind of area of expertise these days is kind of UI. So I'm kind of do a lot of like custom UI work and and talking about, I guess, different ways of implementing UIs in Android. So yeah. Okay. So what was your talk about? Yeah. Um, so today I gave a talk on uh, custom views, which is basically kind of leveraging the kind of innate, uh, I guess, view drawing system in Android, mm -hmm. and t to create your own components. Because normally with Android we have a lot of out of the box components, um, but sometimes those aren't enough, and right. sometimes you kind of have to uh, roll your own completely custom uh, view. So that was today, and then tomorrow um, there's actually a very new component that we have in Android. It's about a year and a half old. And it's basically a new way of constructing um, UIs uh, rather than having uh, views that you position very explicitly uh, or using kind of other platform um, layouts that are things like, I guess, linear layouts and, and kind of very explicit kind of things. It's actually called constraint layout. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a new, much more declarative way of defining a UI as relationships to each other. Um, okay. We've had it in Android before with another one, but this is actually a very new system. Um, it's built on kind of like a new, uh, it's, it's got a very good solid um, base uh, built on this kind of like uh, constraint solver system. And so it's very efficient. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I'll be talking about uh, basically how you use it and all the cool things about it. So. Okay, wow. Yeah. So that means you you work on the Trello Android app, I yes. guess. Yes, yes I do. For a couple years now. Okay, wow. And that has I think a lot of like a uh, number of downloads I could imagine. Oh, uh, we do all right. A uh, several million I think. <laughs> oh. I think Trello <laughs> Trello, <laughs> That's a lot. Trello as a whole, I think we're at oh, I'm a, I'm a ter I'm so I'm an engineer, so I'm not as great with like the kind of business stats, but I think we're at about 20 million users. Don't well, quote me on that. I think it's somewhere yeah, between Yeah, a, a lot. <laughs> a lot. It's somewhere between 20 million. So I think our Android app has like a, f a few million downloads. So yeah, it's pretty intense. It's wow. probably the biggest um, Android project that I've worked on in terms okay. of uh, number of users. Right, and once you have that, m I mean, huge amount of <laughs> number of users, um, how does it influence the normal development? Because I, I could imagine you have to take that into account somehow that you, you know, once you would potentially break something, you mm. affect a lot of users. Or Yeah, know. well, it's really funny because I think something that is very important to us on our team is um, kind of always being on, if not on the bleeding edge of technology, but very close to it. Now we're still very judicious about what we kind of, what technologies we incorporate, mm -hmm. but we try to be very kind of, um, I, I hate to use this word because I know that everyone always talks about capital A agile, <laughs> but I'm going to use it in the normal kind of like agile as in like very adaptive. Um, mm -hmm. And we do have like checks in place where we tend to make sure we do testing. Um, we have really great QA testers and we try to kind of like, um, you know, make sure that we have like kind of very uh, modular releases, like kind of uh, very um, moderately sized releases and just try to keep things under control. But, you know, it is actually really interesting. I think actually having a lot of users has been uh, to our benefit. We get tons mm -hmm. of feedback all mm -hmm. the time. Um, and we have a great support staff. And so we're always getting feedback either from our beta. And so our, our beta is really important to us. Um, and is it kind of a significant place for us to get feedback and also just kind of shove new things to our users and see what breaks. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and, um, but we also just get a lot of great feedback from our users just through normal things like Help Scout and, and tickets and stuff. But um, no, it is very challenging, especially when things happen. Like for Android, like about once a year, uh, we have a new release and it's hard to tell sometimes like what APIs might break and what won't. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. For example, this year, the newest uh, release was Android o Oreo and it's always fun when a new release comes out because you always anticipate all these fun new APIs and features that you can do. Right. But then there's always these little like provisos and little things that you don't anticipate that kind of can require lots of hours of work. So for example, um, Android Oreo has introduced new kind of background process limits. Oh, okay. um, and that's kind of like to reduce, um, I guess, a lot of apps in the background kind of waking up and kind of churning, you know, like uh, on the CPU when, when, when those apps are actually asleep. So there's a lot more limits now on how you can initiate mm -hmm. processes and initiate tasks from the background. And that kind of actually became a really difficult problem because over the years, you kind of get used to doing things a certain mm -hmm. way. And then it actually was harder than anticipated for us to kind of deal with that. Um, okay. And that resulted in a lot of crashes as well, which you have to fix. And then, yeah, it's just, sure, sure. it's interesting. But having a big user base, I think, is really fun. Um, and as long as you're careful, you can still kind of push the limits of what 
um, you can do and kind of try new things as long as you kind of do it in a measured way, test a lot, and then, um, you know, just kind of be judicious, I guess, about what you ask. Because there's, like, there's different levels of adding new things to right, the, to the right. code base. Um, so and yes, yeah, specifically talking about testing and uh, all kind of automation, um, mm -hmm. how much... Um, automation you have in the delivery process. So basically, once you do a change, like is that can that be delivered like n not immediately since it's an app and I mm -hmm. think you have several versions, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but how fast can you deliver, let's say, a new small feature or improvement to your customers in that app? Um, that's an interesting question. It actually takes us a little while. So um, I think we're fortunate, like, because we work very closely with the iOS side, and mm -hmm. they actually have more hurdles because they go through an approval pro right. process. Right. For Android, we're a lot more, I think we're a lot more independent in terms of what we can upload. Mm -hmm. um, so we do, um, so we have, like, um, on our code repo, we do have a uh, con continuous integration um, that we're generally, you know, building every single time. Mm -hmm. And so um, that, we, but it's not, it's, it, let me think. So if we wanted if we wanted to get a hot fix out, we could probably depending on like basically um, how much testing we can get, how, mm -hmm. how much the QA can pitch in and make sure that um, we haven't introduced any more aggressions from a hot fix. Right. I'd say like a few hours. Like we've had okay, occasions okay. where we've had like just a few hours where we can kind of um, put the AP uh, kind of ba basically um, get the get the fixes in there, get QA to get a good look at it. Um, and again, that's also provi uh, providing that we've kind of isolated and been very, very careful about what we're adding right. in, in the hotfix. Um, we've, we've turned over a couple of hotfixes in just a couple hours. Oh, okay. um, and then the actual dissemination fast. to the users is actually kind of dependent because it's hard to say um, once you upload an APK exactly when people will well, A, when it'll be available, and B, when people actually get it. But yeah, it's usually right, just a few that's hours. The next thing. Yeah, it's a really quick turn turnaround time. And normally we don't want to have to kind of turn around that quickly. That usually means that we've done something, you know, a little bit too hastily. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. we're kind of lucky in Android that we can do these things pretty fairly quickly, um, provided, like, you know, we've. We've kind of done all of our you know, due diligence and everything. So. Right, right. And uh, having that said, do you have some normal release cycles when you have features, or is it just like, okay, this is finished, like it will be? You know, we're we're kind of, you know, we'd, we'd love to do like a regular release cycle. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my friends uh, in Android, actually, my fiance, uh, my husband, or one of the two, um, he's both, uh, is actually also an Android developer. And I know that for hi on his team, they, they think they do a release every two weeks. So they're mm -hmm. like always overlapping new feature development and QA. But I think we don't quite have the resources for that. Mm -hmm. Like we're still a small team. We were four people about six months ago. Now we're oh, wow. five people. Yeah, we're a very okay, small team. And then we had like one dedicated Android QA tester. And mm -hmm. so doing kind of like a very quick release, like a, a regular release cycle becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and then integrating on top of that. So we, it's, it's always a challenge because, you know, we have things on Android that we want to do. We want to refactor things, architecture, um, introducing new libraries. But then we also have kind of the new features, the kind of sure. like the business, uh, the business kind of uh, <laughs> the business driven features that we have to incorporate. So it, it, we haven't quite worked out a process where we can do that and do like say two week, two week release cycles just yet. So generally what we do is we just, you know, kind of um, do kind of triage both on kind of existing bugs and mm -hmm. features or kind of uh, refactoring cleanup and then whatever kind of um, forward features that we want to do, maybe like a new feature or kind of a new um, I guess uh, I guess kind of like a, a new refactoring might be doing, and we kind of just prioritize. We usually try to keep it to like two to three, uh, one major thing with some bug fixes, and then it's kind of us dri like driving it. So we don't have regular releases like it's just like kind of when something is vague, is pretty much done, uh, and then we will release it uh, along with mm -hmm. some other things mm -hmm. that we've triaged into the release. So um, yeah, it would be nice if we could do that, and we've really wanted to, but we just yeah we just don't mm -hmm. have the resources to, to to do that successfully. So. Wow, well, interesting. Um, so about the conference, is it your first time here in Orodev? Yeah, yeah, my first Orodev. Okay, so what's your impression so far? Oh, I, I love it. Um, I actually generally go, so I go to a lot of conferences, but I generally go to Android-specific mm -hmm. conferences, yeah. um, which is great because we have an amazing community, um, and it's nice to see friendly faces, but it is very, very focused on Android-specific things, or mm -hmm. nowadays also Kotlin, because Kotlin is kind of a big uh, big switch now in, in the Android community. It's a new language we're incorporating, but it's generally very focused and very uh, niche. And then sometimes there will be kind of more inspirational talks, um, the, you know, kind of more non-technical talks about, mm -hmm. I guess, community or um, kind of inspirational talks about where, you know, maybe mobile and things like that are going. But I love Urdev because it feels like... Um, it's very, it's very mixed. There's a lot of different people from different backgrounds, you know, web, mobile, um, and hardware as well. But there's a lot of inspirational talks, I feel, and a lot of things that address um, 
<clears throat> kind of topics that are not specifically so technical and not so focused. So I love it. Um, it's it's always good to do the hard technical stuff, in my opinion, and mm -hmm. like look at code and look at, oh, there's this cool library, or oh, this is how we solve this particular problem, or here's a security thing. But I think longevity and enthusiasm and, and maintaining passion for doing this job, um, especially considering some of the things that we have to slog through to get, you know, uh, you know, uh, code shipped and, and, you know, like address issues for our customers, um, that can be kind of, uh, I guess, draining. So having a conference where it's not just technical content, but kind of inspirational, um, kind of forward looking content is really important. So I love it. It's, it's, it's a good change. As much as I love my Android people, my Android conferences, love y'all, would never <laughs> give you up. It's good to have a, a different perspective. And I, I think looking at the wider context of what we do technologically kind of helps us kind of try new things mm -hmm. and think about different Absolutely. ways to apply what we do. So I love it. It's great. Absolutely. So. All right. So any uh, last things you want to share uh, with the live uh, audience, maybe for folks who are not here at uh, Oradev in Sweden? Uh, yeah. You, well, you first, you should definitely come to or, uh, Um And uh, it's I think it's like three days. It's kind of one of the longer conferences that I've been in. And uh, it's really cool. I, what I love is that, that there's basically three keynotes a day. Mm -hmm. So so again, it's just like a good mix of technical, inspirational stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, you should definitely download Trello. Um, I, it's, uh, I know a lot of folks that use Trello for their development, so hi. Um, uh, glad, glad, to, glad that you're using Trello. And um, I don't know, I guess, I guess if you're looking into getting into Android, uh, contact me. Um, oh, and I guess, can I plug my channel? I guess sure. that's all right. Yeah. Um, so similar to this, uh, a friend of mine, uh, we're, that are bo we're both um, Google developer experts. Uh, we don't work for Google, we're just, uh, we're just kind of vaguely know some things about Android, but we started a YouTube channel where we talk to people in the Android community. So if you are an Android developer and you want to see uh, other Android developers and see what other people in the community are doing, um, you should definitely check out Android Dialogues on YouTube, um, all one word. But yeah, um, come to Ordev. Also, just come to conferences in general. I think that's something that's been really important to me in my career um, is that it's it's really hard to build a really great and fulfilling career in isolation. And I say that as someone who's an engineer, I'm a little introverted and it's, it's fun to kind of sit in your room or sit in your office and hack at something for mm -hmm. 20 hours. But um, community is kind of like, it, it's so important. I don't think I'd be where I am in my career or in my skill set if people didn't take the time to do community things um, like Sebastian does with like all of this with uh, night hacking, but also in terms of uh, in terms of speaking. So um, be involved. Um, even if you're kind of shy, go and listen uh, and try to meet people. And uh, if you're feeling brave, speak. Um, it's a great experience and um, it can enrich you and teach you a lot. And um, you know, keep you from being lonely because we're engineers. We like to, we tend to be off on our own, but um, community makes you stronger and makes a much better career and a happier one. So, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, that's a I'm a big fan <laughs> of community. So, um, yeah, so you should definitely uh, get out there. Perfect. So, thanks a lot. Thanks uh, a lot for the interview and for everybody. Well, thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.